Welcome to A Night of Weeping and A Morning of Joy from the Divine Plan of the Ages by Charles Taze Russell, part one of two on Words of Wisdom. Charles Taze Russell, also known as Pastor Russell, was an American religious leader, author and lecturer. He was the founder of the Christian denomination of the Jehovah's Witnesses, a group that emerged from the Bible student movement in the United States. The Bible student movement was based on the teachings and ministry of Mr. Russell. He is noted for his analytical interpretations of the Holy Bible and for dedicating his life and resources to the preaching of the future establishment of a golden age on earth. According to Mr. Russell's research of the Holy Bible, God's kingdom will rule the earth through Christ. In 1879, Mr. Russell started a Bible journal, now called the Watchtower, after which he established the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society for the purpose of distributing religious literature. He remained president of the society until he passed away in 1916. Mr. Russell's books and booklets were widely read, with 16 million copies in 35 languages. In addition, his weekly sermons were published by thousands of newspapers. Among the most well-known works of his is the seven-volume series, Studies in the Scriptures. Today, we will read a selection from Volume 1 of Charles Taze Russell's Studies in the Scriptures, entitled The Divine Plan of the Ages. A careful study of the Holy Scriptures by Pastor Russell led to finding important revelations about the great change which awaits our world before stepping into the glorified Golden Age. Scripture Studies, Volume 1 The Divine Plan of the Ages, Earth's Night of Sin, to terminate in a morning of joy. The title of this series of studies, The Divine Plan of the Ages, suggests a progression in the divine arrangement foreknown to our God and orderly. We believe the teachings of divine revelation can be seen to be both beautiful and harmonious from this standpoint and from no other. The period in which sin is permitted has been a dark night to humanity, never to be forgotten but the glorious day of righteousness and divine favour to be ushered in by Messiah, who as the Son of Righteousness shall arise and shine fully and clearly into and upon all bringing healing and blessing will more than counterbalance the dreadful night of weeping, sighing, pain, sickness and death in which the groaning creation has been so long. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Psalm chapter 30 verse 5 As though by instinct the whole creation while it groans and travails in pain, waits for, longs for and hopes for the day, calling it the golden age. Yet men grope blindly because not aware of the great Jehovah's God's gracious purposes, but their highest conceptions of such an age fall far short of what the reality will be. The great creator is preparing a feast of fat things, fat meaning abundant, full of life, which will astound his creatures and be exceedingly, abundantly beyond what they could reasonably ask or expect. And to his wondering creatures, looking at the length and breadth, the height and depth of the love of God, surpassing all expectation, he explains, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 to 9 
Though in this work we shall endeavour, and we trust with success, to set before the interested and unbiased reader the plan of God as it relates to and explains the past, the present, and the future of his dealings, in a way more harmonious, beautiful, and reasonable than is generally understood, yet that this is the result of extraordinary wisdom or ability on the part of the writer is positively disclaimed. It is the light from the sun of righteousness in this dawning of the millennial day that reveals these things as present truth now due to be appreciated by the sincere, the pure in heart. Since skepticism is rife, the very foundation of true religion and the foundation of truth is questioned often, even by the sincere. We have endeavoured to uncover enough of the foundation upon which all faith should be built, the Word of God, to give confidence and assurance and its testimony even to the unbeliever. And we have endeavoured to do this in a manner that will appeal to you and can be accepted by reason as a foundation. Then we have endeavoured to build upon that foundation the teachings of Scripture in such a manner that, so far as possible, purely human judgment may try its squares and angles by the most exacting rules of justice which it can command. Believing that the Scriptures reveal a consistent and harmonious plan which, when seen, must commend itself to every sanctified conscience, this work is published in the hope of assisting students of the Word of God by suggesting lines of thought which harmonize with each other and with the inspired Word. Those who recognize the Bible as the revelation of God's plan and such we specially address will doubtless agree that, if inspired of God, its teachings must, when taken as a whole, reveal a plan harmonious and consistent with itself and with the character of its divine author. Our object as truth seekers should be to obtain the complete, harmonious whole of God's revealed plan, and this as God's children. We have reason to expect, since it is promised that the Spirit of Truth shall guide us into all truth. John chapter 16 verse 13 As inquirers, we have two methods open to us. One is to seek among all the views suggested by the various religious groups of the church and to take from each that element which we may consider truth, an endless task. A difficulty which we should meet by this method would be that if our judgment were warped and twisted, or our prejudice is bent in any direction, and whose are not, these difficulties would prevent our correct selection, and we might choose the error and reject the truth. Again, if we should adopt this as our method, we should lose much, because the truth is progressive, shining more and more unto the perfect day to those who search for it, and walk in the light of it. This method would lead into a labyrinth of bewilderment and confusion. The other method is to divest our minds of all prejudice and to remember that none can know more about the plans of God than he has revealed in his word and that it was given to the meek and lowly of heart and as such earnestly and sincerely seeking its guidance and instruction only, we shall, by its great author, be guided to an understanding of it, as it becomes due to be understood by making use of the various helps divinely provided. See Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 16.